When comparing Piledriver to Metal Face competitors, at first glance they all look quite similar. It's not until you take a close look and evaluate them side by side that the differences become apparent. There are two sensing face concepts that you'll find when evaluating metal face proximity sensors. The first is called, or what we call, a foil face. The foil face is a 0.2 or less millimeter thick sensing face. This, of course, in comparison to pile drivers, 0.7 millimeter. The 0.2 millimeter face is inviting from a design standpoint because it allows you to use the same electronics, the same circuitry that you would use in a regular proximity sensor. The drawback to using a foil face circuit and a foil face design is, of course, it's a foil face. And in our evaluations of the concept, we decided not to pursue that. Uh, the problem with the foil face is it's foil. And when the foil, the sensor gets hit, the foil rips, the foil tears, and before you know it, you have the same problem you had when you had your plastic face proximity sensor. If you look at a pile driver, we use the thick face. That thick face allows us to withstand a lot of physical abuse. Now that we've taken a look at the two sensing face concepts for metal face proximity sensors, thick face and thin face, it's time to take a look at the different concepts for encapsulation. Pepperell and Fuchs pile driver uses a full encapsulation. We feel this is very important to give maximum shock and vibration immunity. Some of our competitors don't do that. A demonstration of the difference between a not full encapsulation and a complete encapsulation can be seen in our pile driver hammer demonstration. In front of me is a, a wooden block and we have a nail. This particular hammer has been used to pound in hundreds of nails with the standard 30 millimeter pile driver. You can see from the face, it's pretty beaten up, but as you can hear, the product still works. A quick demonstration of hitting the nail into the wood. The nail's in the wood. The sensor still works. We decided to see how some of our competitors would fare in our hammer test. This particular model didn't fare so well. If you look at the sensing face, you can see that it's sloped down to the right. It actually collapsed after a couple hits with the hammer. When we cut the sensor open, we found that this particular competitor didn't have full encapsulation. And the problem was, this plug here, once the sensor got hit, moved. As the plug moved, then the board cracks, then the core cracks, and your sensor latches on. Uh, this competitor has a very thick face, same as PNF, 0.7 millimeters. So it goes to show you it doesn't matter what your sensing face thickness is, if your encapsulation is insufficient, your product's going to still fail, just like a plastic face sensor would. As we learned earlier, many sensors look the same, but once you get them on the test bench, they act differently. Recently we got a phone call from a customer who said they found a data sheet on the internet which showed a metal face product with 20 millimeter sensing range in an 18 millimeter diameter barrel. This was surprising to PNF because even our extended range model has 10 millimeter range, half of what this competitor alleged. We decided we should get one in and check it out and see how it compares. What I'm going to do now is show you first the Pepperell and Fuchs NMB10 pile driver, which has 10 millimeter range and an 18 millimeter diameter barrel. I'm going to use this test fixture. I've had it, I have this zeroed out. I pull the target back. We go forward, turn on point, 9.5 millimeters. Go back, 9.5 millimeters. And you can see the hysteresis, it stays on for a short bit within 10, uh, 10 or 15 percent, and then it turns off. Now we're going to show the same sensor embedded in steel. 
If you notice on a pile driver, the top 2.5 millimeters are unthreaded. That means you can't thread up to the tip there. That must stay free of metal. So what we do is we have that top 2.5 millimeters peeking out. Let's put it back in our dis uh, demo. Again, we got 9.5 millimeters the first time. Now let's see when you mount it with the metal. Nine point five, nine point five, nine point five, and the hysteresis stays the same. Now, in the same fixture, we're going to take a look at the competitor's model, which claims twenty millimeter sensing range. It's zeroed out. Detects the target. We're at twelve. 14, turn on points about 15.3 millimeters. So that's pretty good. It's better than 10 millimeters, but not quite the 20 that they specify in their data sheet. Now let's take a look at the mounting of this product. The first thing we'll look at is this, the mounting nuts. That's how you mount most cylindrical sensors in a through hole style. If we put these mounting nuts up near the face, If you use those front threads, you're going to have a problem where the sensor latches on. That's a very unstable sensor. Oftentimes, also, you'll find that the sensor may work when you put it into an angle bracket, but if the environment gets warmer or colder and it's just on the threshold where it may turn on or turn off, that heat will cause the sensor to latch on. Now let's take a look if you're going to embed it in metal. This is a 7 millimeter tip, so we have to thread it down to about here and see what it does in steel. Okay. We're on the edge of the threads here. It's still latched on. Maybe half an inch down, still latched on. A full inch down, still latched on. So this competitor, while they state 20 millimeter sensing range, has some real issues when you mount it. Unless you want to use a plastic bracket and make sure there's no metal around, there's a lot of catches. So beware of that whenever you're choosing a metal face proximity sensor. What's on the data sheet may not be what you get when you install it.